Greetings from Paul Levy, enjoying a good break during the Easter weekend here in Brighton in the UK. And I guess you might call this a fireside chat because I'm sitting, uh, there we go, outside by the fire. And just offering a few philosophical, but I think necessarily important reflections on AI. Now that's an acronym that stands, as you know, for Artificial Intelligence and there's a lot of rhetoric around artificial intelligence at the moment and when I teach my students at a couple of different universities about AI I try to make it as clear as possible that AI hasn't actually arrived yet. Now some of you watching this may well have disagreed almost instantaneously as you heard that. Others you might think about it and disagree with it. And others you might agree, you might have an instinct or you might have your own theories about why current AI, supposed AI, so-called AI is not AI. But it stands for something else that's still AI and I'll come to that in a moment. But it's just worth noting that there are disagreements about whether the current brand known as AI, and it's certainly branded as AI and currently generative AI, um, certainly makes us very interested in the field known as AI and the hype known as AI um, because AI is artificial intelligence and we've been told that. We've been told it by corporations, we've been told it by various so-called experts in the field of AI. But there are certainly um, experts in the field of AI, particularly who've been around for a long time and I've spoken to a few of them in a group called Brighton AI which is associated sometimes with the University of Sussex, which has been doing work in the field of artificial intelligence for as long as I can remember, and certainly back to the times when I was an undergraduate, I'm now in my 50s, is that a lot of those people disagree as well at the various meetups. And I would say a significant uh, number of experts look at current AI and talk about it in terms of it being very impressive, of it being almost miraculous, as it being a form of complex computing that makes use of large language models and makes use of you know, other key elements around that, uh, and particularly around the notion it's complex computing, um, and that's impressive, and that can do incredible things. And if any of you are making videos uh, using AI, yet generative AI apps, any of you are getting AI to challenge parking tickets, um, it's very easy to see the rhetoric and to see the hype as just a very clear and almost too obvious to even discuss example of the arrival of artificial intelligence. I do find it interesting that there's a conflict of interest that's very rarely spoken of, which is the head of organisations like OpenAI, which began with a rhetoric around being almost like non-profit charity and open source, are very far from that. So they are entrepreneurs, they are corporations, and often they're in a peer group that also includes social media um, organisations that want adverts to be sold and to be seen. And I immediately see a conflict of interest around people in places of expertise who happen to be entrepreneurs, who happen to be founder entrepreneurs in a field that I call a brand known as artificial intelligence, particularly generative artificial intelligence, that somehow they have some sort of scientific authority, some sort of objectivity around calling something AI. And certainly those scrutinising ChatGPT, for example, are getting really concerned. And even today, here on um, Easter Sunday 2025, I was reading stories that showed great concern around the idea that generative AI has already passed the Turing test. And I had problems with the Turing test anyway. Uh, and I'm going to come on to that in a moment. Because I want to suggest to you that AI currently doesn't exist in the form of artificial intelligence. It certainly exists in the form of artificial impersonation. And, and it's brilliant at it. And it's possible for you to sit down and bring back the dead, literally, by prompting generative AI and even making uh, it not only pre-trained, but trained on data that you provide it so it becomes an absolute expertise in one of your departed relatives. Um, and then you bring them back and they speak. Um, and you could even make videos of them with deep fakes. And you think, wow, that is one of my relatives brought back from the dead. The question of whether you should do that, whether you want to do that, what some of the moral questions are, is largely laid aside. And so 
We have a problem right from the start, which is some of the key opinion formers and key so-called experts in the field of artificial intelligence who have heralded it have, in many cases, a conflict of interest in buying into, uh, getting us to buy into the hype rather than the objective reality. And there are certainly enough people uh, around there who've been around AI for a long time who say, hold your horses, this is not artificial intelligence. So what do I mean when I call it artificial impersonation? Well, it's certainly able to impersonate people, particularly in the typed version of ChatGPT, and not long after we've got running up, um, not far behind, uh, the, the climb to the Mount Everest of artificial intelligence, which is kind of the peak, is artificial general intelligence, is the ability, uh, which for me, I know I'm being simplistic, but um, is to fool us that an AI behind a wall speaking compared to a human being that we would not be able to tell the difference. And the reason I have a philosophical difficulty with that, and I just wonder why, maybe philosophy is seen as an inconvenient truth and an inconvenient field for the likes of Sam Altman and um, the kind of the digerati um, who had that conflict of interest of being both entrepreneurs and put themselves across as somehow pronouncers of the truth uh, without necessarily recognizing they might have a conflict of interest there um, is simply that artificial impersonation um, doesn't work conceptually it doesn't work even morally because based on that simplistic view of the Turing test is standing behind a wall is a and I see plenty of them at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival that I go to is a human impersonator and is a human being the person that they're impersonating and it's suggesting that if I can't tell the difference behind a wall between the person impersonating Sam Altman and Sam Altman himself that somehow the person impersonating has reached the same level of Sam Altmanness as Sam Altman now that's nonsense and it's a bit morally dubious as well because it's kind of a form of deception maybe we should call it AED because it's okay to do a brilliant impersonation and it could even be functional and useful to do a brilliant impersonation although I think already we're getting moral questions around writing a letter to say your grandma in a care home because you haven't visited uh, using an AI say to tell uh, write a long letter with all of our news uh, because it has access to your laptop and your emails but grandma thinks it's you well that's a form of artificial deception brought about by artificial impersonation and maybe you don't think there's a problem with that uh, I certainly do and I know a number of people say there are ethical questions around artificial deception um, in the same way as there would be if uh, we sent somebody to visit grandma who was such a great actor grandma thought it was us because uh, we were too busy or it was felt in inefficient to do the journey and we get better value from sending an impersonator and so that's been my personal experience of AI and when I ask students and certainly when I ask colleagues in the university setting um, when we talk about it we get to the notion that if a student is handing in an essay carried out in terms of the writing process by an artificial impersonator of them one that could uh, defeat even our abilities with any tools or just intuition to say that's not the original student and we give them a first class grade that that's actually breaking the rules of the university because that's not a technical uh, breakdown of morality it is a human one because at the moment our moral code suggests somebody should not fake being somebody else and in fact in certain business contexts that's called fraud and in certain social contexts it's probably called not being very nice and certainly being a bit dodgy so at the moment generative AI souped up as AI is largely being experienced by very large numbers of users as a really impressive form of artificial impersonation and it can be impersonating you of course and a number of people are already doing that it could be impersonating colleagues it could be impersonating someone from history it could be impersonating an expert it could be impersonating a lawyer it could be impersonating a dead relative um, and it can also be impersonating something more generic like being an expert in a certain subject um, or it could be impersonating being an academic. It could be impersonating being um, an expert in any field. And what it's doing is impersonating so effectively, you don't know the human from the artificial intelligence. But it's not necessarily artificial intelligence, it's an artificial impersonator. And I don't believe we've had the moral conversations. In fact, we've almost left, leapt, and I see it on LinkedIn all the time, to the idea that if we use that, 
if we use that to create our presentation as if we created the slides as uh, to use it to uh, create a video with us speaking or um, us um, singing or us creating some art as if it were us and we don't reveal that we used an AI to create it um, what we've got is fraud what we've actually got is at least moral dubiousness and of course what we've currently got too is we've got the sense and certainly this happens in the university with my colleagues where they can't prove that the student didn't write it but they have an instinct and it's an instinct that you get over time with an impersonator and the wow factor in the first few minutes of oh my that's Donald Trump oh my that is Winston Churchill oh my that is Ursula von der Leyen or that is Madonna um, or that is Martin Luther King or that is Desmond Tutu or that is a member of your family, or that is me, seems to run out over time. Um, and then certain human instincts kick in that might actually always be there, where over time we start to see through the disguise. We start to see through the deception. But equally, you should perhaps ask yourself, what if you can't over time see through the deception and the deception becomes permanent? What kind of society are, are we creating where we announce through the hype that we've arrived at artificial intelligence? which in my belief will come with things like organoid computing and will be biological and more on that on another video. But um, that what we're doing is we're just simply hyping and deceiving because artificial intelligence is not that at all. It's simply brilliant, hard to detect, but morally dubious artificial impersonation.